Uh, hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Grapplers Academy. Today we've got some good examples of nasty jiu-jitsu for you. Now it is often called the gentle art. The, the options nah. that we're going to be showing today are <laughs> going to be the gentle art. These are the ones that you either do to your best friends on the mat or the they surf for, yeah, they yeah. for competition, aren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, like, sort of like, say the gentle art or like sort of, what are the comparisons? Is it jiu-jitsu, they kind of go around the wall. Wrestlers and catch wrestlers just try and go through the wall. Um, this is more going through the wall, and if you want to add a bit of finesse on it, you can go sort of round the remains. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is knocking the wall down <laughs> and then giving them no opportunity to build it back up again. <laughs> and then you can stand on the pile of rubble at the end. So, working off that chin strap position that we were looking at last week on that initial bit of control, we're going to have a look at two different options for attacking the dash which are both available for that front one. We've got, both got, uh, you've got a nice turnover, so Sai's going to go through the turnover on that. And um, yeah, both just nasty positions. The, yeah. The, yeah, a lot of pressure on the um, top of the spine, like we were talking about. We want to control both ends of the spine with the movement. So a lot of options for attacking there. So do you want to go through? Yeah, let's go through it. So this first one that we're going to look at, uh, pick this one up from uh, Cam over at ASW and it's gnarly, like it's just horrendous in the back of the neck and once you've got your grips and you've got the angles right you can actually allow them to re-turtle back up, turn it back over, re-turtle, return, re-turtle, return, till their neck is just ready to give up and then you sort of give them the pleasure of that so they can actually get out of the position. So starting off in chin strap position and on, what you will see on the other side of the camera is I'm just cupping the elbow for now and I'm trying to reach my arm all the way through here. So I'm going to take the chin and I've got the elbow. I'm going to turn the corner a little bit so I'm side on. Now from here, as I do this, I'm turning the head a little bit and I'm reaching my hand all the way through here. So as I'm reaching under the armpit, this arm's going to be forward. And I'm not just sort of going elbow deep. I'm trying to get my ear to the back and my hand for the other side so I can wave to everybody. Now once I get this arm all the way through, this second hand is going to come over the top, so it's going to come from the chin. I'm going to tie my hands together with a thumbless gable grip. Now once I get here, it's important that my forearms are aligned in the right way. One thing I don't want to do, especially against big players, is start battling the neck. Because even though you're at the top of the spine, this position here can still be quite strong. So I'm going to go more so around the crown. And if you're unfortunate like me, where you've got a little bit um, bare on top, where the ball pass tends to be. So we're here, got this here, and I've got my forearm over the back of the crown. Now from here, I'm going to send his nose and his chin towards his belly button, and I'm going to pull the head right the way under, and I'm going to use my left shoulder that's underneath the ribcage to turn him all the way over here. Now, typically from here, you're not going to get on the first attempt. So what will happen is I'll actually turn and try and get the turtle back up. Now, if this happens, don't let it dishearten you. It plays into the game plan of tiring them out, keep going again until they actually give up and give you the position. But then one thing that can highlight to you is that when you turn them back over, if you watch the bottom, as soon as he turns back over, it's that near side leg that goes first. So when we've turned him over, as he steps that leg over, we're going to catch it, pull it towards us, and catch them in here. Now, just so you're aware, this leg can be vulnerable if I don't have complete control of the head. So rather than sort of letting the head go free where Bond can start to attack and invert and attack the neck, I'm going to keep hold of, the, um, of this gable from the back of the neck. Now, let's take you this way a bit, mate. To finish the last, I'm going to change my grip of my hands. So I'm going to go from the gable grip. Now this bottom hand is going to go to the back of the neck. This second hand is going to go to the back of the head. And again, I'm going to push the neck forward and reach my hand that little bit further through. Now rather than just switching and letting go and going straight to the bicep, I'm going to slide all the way down and trace my chin over so I'm bringing my chest over the shoulder. Grab the bicep, grab the lat, and I can either drop off to the side, rolling backwards so his, so his uh, shoulders are vertical, 
and apply pressure to finish the darts. Now, Bon has got a similar, but he's almost spinning this uh, turnover, so I'll pass over. Yeah, so something similar, uh, problems that we'll often encounter when we're looking to turn somebody over in a dart is basically, um, they can base with the legs, they can base with the arms as well. A lot, often a lot of times people are going to base with this forearm. So similar sort of entry to what we were talking about there. And when we're always looking at entering in on the dart, it needs to be on a good side on position. Um, there's a good uh, little instruction that Jeff Glover talks about, where he talks about almost being sat side by side to, the, to your opponent with this, so that we can reach through and get nice and deep. It's easier to access this, the further around the side than we are, than around the front. You can see that my access there is a little bit, uh, a little bit more difficult the more front on arm with him. So as Cyrus was saying, we use this chin strap to keep the control. As we shuffle around to the side and bring the head position through, that gives me that access and now a nice space here to get up on the side of the neck. And I've got a nice deep access under the armpit as well. So here, what sometimes what's going to happen is, as I'm trying to drive him over, sometimes in this position, he's going to base out with this hand. We can anticipate that and put a block in at the elbow while still using the tricep on the top arm to control the head. So we've still got the similar sort of pressure to what we had with the chin strap. Even though we've let go, we've got that tricep control there now. We'll come down and block on the elbow. At the same time as getting low and imagining a similar sort of pressure to what you'd be at in a scrum. We're getting low on it and driving up and forward. I'm taking away this table leg and I'm going to drive him over in that direction to complete the turnover. You can see I've not lost control of the head there if we spin around this way. When I come through, I've still got control of the head with the back of the tricep and I've got an instant access there to the finish on the DAS. So just one more time on that so we can see that turnover and the access. We'll go from, I'll just shuffle back a little bit there that way. So from here, we've got the chin strap and the, tri and the tricep control. I'm going to use the chin strap to come around to the side so we can open up the access for the DAS. We've not lost the head control and we're still putting pressure into your opponent all the way through. Once we've switched that through, I'm going to come straight from the chin strap but apply the tricep pressure immediately and come down to trap and cook the elbow. We're going to drive in, the, in a 45 degree angle, so we're not going to go straight over to the side because you've still got this leg to base out if I'm driving that way. I want to take him over this table leg that I'm taking away, so head pressure in. Again, we're going to tuck and roll like Cy was talking about. Get low and drive. And then we've got the pressure on the back of the head still. He's still not been able to take his head out and start regarding. And then we've got instant access to that dart and the finish there. Same finishes, uh, as I said, we can step in, access over the top. There's a possibility of being vulnerable for a leg attack there. You've also got the option of wrapping on the bottom leg and squeezing for the finish if you want to try and compress that spine a little bit more. Or we can always get a good finish just by going belly down and getting the tap there on that. Um, both options are good options. I've been on the receiving end of that one of size quite often and it's really disheartening. You think you're doing a good job of escaping, but actually what he's doing is just letting you get back up and tiring you out. Yeah, sort of uh, just trying to break the spirit before you can go on and put him to sleep. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's exactly that. Cheers, <laughs> <mate>. <laughs> yeah. Um, go back and watch the previous video in the series on the chin strap control because we talk about the chin strap and the importance of that cupping of the tricep. Um, and controlling the two ends of the spine as well. And we also have another video where we do look at the DAS from side control. So again, you might notice that it's one of our favorite choice submissions. So you, then this may visit again and again and again, but you can never get too many DAS's to be fair. Yeah, it's kind of just going over the subject we talked about when we discussed the turtle uh, it broadly in the, in the general discussion about it. And we're talking about reintroducing some of those catch wrestling mm. aspects of uh, grappling into jiu-jitsu as well and making it as a size as a bit more gnarly. Yeah, don't want to sort of be a nice safe haven from someone when you avoid that position by passing guard. They turtle up, you make it as horrible for them as possible so they don't want to be there again. Go and check out the this week's audio uh, podcast as well, which yeah. is... On Spotify, yeah. iTunes, usual places, and you'll find us uh, everywhere on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube and on the podcast uh, search providers at the Graphics Academy. And if you like what you hear and saw, please make sure you share, uh, comment, like, subscribe, pass it on to your friends. Thank you guys.